Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. In this video, I'll discuss the most effective ways to prevent glaucoma naturally. I'll discuss some of the latest research studies and give you tips on what lifestyle changes you can make to prevent glaucoma. Before we discuss these tips, let's first review what glaucoma is, what causes it, and how it can affect your vision. In order to understand how glaucoma affects the eyes, we need to discuss how the pressure in the eye is regulated. The eye is filled with a clear fluid called aqueous humor, which is produced by a structure called the ciliary body. This fluid flows out of the eye through a small drain called the trabecular meshwork. The trabecular meshwork is located in an area called the drainage angle. If this drainage system is blocked or isn't functioning well, then the fluid can't flow out of the eye properly, causing eye pressure to increase, which can lead to damage of the optic nerve. If glaucoma does progress, it can begin to cause decreased side or peripheral vision. In severe cases, patients can develop tunnel vision, and if it's left untreated, glaucoma can cause outright blindness, leaving no vision at all. Okay, now that we understand what glaucoma is and what causes it, let's review some of the best ways to prevent it. The first tip I have to prevent glaucoma is frequent high-intensity exercise. A study published in 2020 from a research team at UCLA invested a group of 1,387 research subjects. These subjects were accelerometers, like a Fitbit, so that the researchers could measure their physical activity and exercise. Then the researchers reviewed eye exams and glaucoma testing done on these patients to see who had glaucoma. They found that patients who spent more time walking or standing compared to sitting around all day decreased their odds of glaucoma by 58%. For every 10 minute increase in moderate activity per day, they found that the odds of having glaucoma decreased by 30%. There's a few theories of why exercise may be protective against glaucoma. A few studies have shown that intraocular pressure tends to decrease after exercise and that lowering of intraocular pressure may be protective. Another belief is that exercise improves oxygen delivery to the optic nerve, which is beneficial. Even though the exact mechanism of why exercise prevents glaucoma is still being figured out, I believe there's enough clinical evidence to support recommending frequent exercise to lower your risk of developing glaucoma. The recommendation I usually give to patients are the guidelines from the American Heart Association. They recommend to aim for 15 minutes of high intensity exercise five days a week. Some examples of high intensity exercise include running, jogging, or swimming. Another alternative is 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, such as a brisk walk, five days a week. The next tip I have to prevent glaucoma may be a little bit surprising, but it's drinking hot tea daily. A research study from 2018 took 1,678 subjects and asked them about their consumption of different beverages, such as iced or hot coffee, caffeinated and decaffeinated iced or hot tea and soft drinks. These subjects also completed glaucoma testing so that the researchers can investigate whether there was a link between one of these drinks and the risk of developing glaucoma. As a side note, two of the researchers on the study, Connie and Annie Wu, were my classmates in college. They are these brilliant twins who both went on to become ophthalmologists, so I wanted to give them a shout out here. Anyway, Dr. Connie and Annie Wu found that people who drank hot, caffeinated tea daily had a 74% decreased odds of having glaucoma. They didn't find any other statistically significant association between coffee, iced tea, or soft drink intake and glaucoma. Another study also had similar encouraging results for hot tea. In this study out of Harvard, they found that people who had a cup of tea daily were found to have an 18% decreased risk of primary open angle glaucoma. This is a pretty interesting finding because I don't think it's that intuitive that hot tea may be protective against glaucoma. But further research has found that there are specific plant compounds such as phytochemicals and flavonoids that are found in high concentrations in brewed tea. These compounds have been shown to have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties that may provide protection to the optic nerve. There have also been some studies that show that flavonoids can promote dilation of blood vessels and promote blood and oxygen supply to the optic nerve. The next tip I have for preventing glaucoma naturally is to eat lots of green leafy vegetables. In this study from 2016, researchers looked at the effect of dietary nitrates on the risk of developing glaucoma. Some of the best sources of nitrates in our diet include green leafy vegetables such as kale, arugula, and spinach. Let's take a step back and look at why nitrates are such an interesting nutrient. Nitric oxide has been shown to be a powerful compound that signals the muscles in our blood vessels to relax. When these muscles relax, 
the blood vessels can widen and improve blood flow and circulation. You might already know that the nitric oxide pathway is actually the basis of how Viagra was discovered. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, scientists at Pfizer knew that nitric oxide was a powerful regulator of blood flow, so they were studying different medications that affect our nitric oxide pathway in order to treat coronary artery disease and chest pain. They figured, if you can help relax blood vessels and improve blood flow to your heart, you can decrease the chest pain associated with coronary artery disease. When they were conducting the study, they noticed that the male research subjects were reporting erections at an alarmingly high rate, so they pivoted and started studying sildenafil, or what's known as Viagra, as an erectile dysfunction medication instead. More recently, the nitric oxide pathway has also been studied in the treatment of glaucoma. One of the newest glaucoma eye drops in the market is called Visalta, and it works by activating the nitric oxide pathway in the drainage system of the eye called the trabecular meshwork. The nitric oxide makes the cells in the trabecular meshwork more relaxed so that fluid can flow out of the eye more easily, decreasing eye pressure. Visalta is a very effective eye drop, but it's also crazy expensive. A one month supply of this drug can cost you up to $250. So I actually think there's a lot of value in thinking about ways to naturally increase the nitrates in our body. Going back to our study on nitrates and its effects on glaucoma, the researchers found that patients who had higher intakes of nitrates through their diet and ate more green leafy vegetables had a 20 to 30% decreased risk of having glaucoma. The theory is eating more of these foods may help stimulate the nitric oxide pathway and help decrease eye pressure naturally. The foods with the highest density of nitrates include beetroots and leafy greens such as kale, arugula, chard, and spinach. So make sure to include plenty of servings of these leafy vegetables in your diet. The next tip I'll discuss to help prevent glaucoma is to decrease alcohol intake. A new study released in June 2022 conducted a review of all the previous studies investigating the relationship between alcohol consumption and glaucoma. They combined the results from 11 studies, which included 173,000 participants. After analyzing the data, they found that alcohol consumption was associated with an 18% increased risk of having primary open angle glaucoma. And digging a little bit deeper into the results of the study, they didn't perform a full analysis on whether certain types of alcohol were associated with a higher risk of glaucoma. But they did mention that red wine wasn't associated with glaucoma in any of the studies they looked at. So it's possible that red wine might not have such a large effect on glaucoma risk. The next tip I have for glaucoma prevention is to treat your sleep apnea. If you or your bed partner snores, make sure to get checked out for sleep apnea. Several studies have found an association between sleep apnea and glaucoma. One study found that patients with sleep apnea had a 67% increased risk of having glaucoma. The prevailing theory is that people who have sleep apnea have trouble breathing while they're sleeping, so it decreases the oxygen levels in their blood. This decreased oxygenation of the optic nerve may make it more vulnerable to damage from glaucoma. The last lifestyle change I'll talk about is marijuana use. Now, I live in California and I get asked frequently by patients whether smoking weed can prevent or even treat their glaucoma. I tell them I don't recommend it. While it's true that some studies have shown that marijuana can decrease your eye pressure, this effect is only temporary. So in order to have a continuous effect on eye pressure, you would need to be smoking marijuana every one or two hours. This is obviously a bad idea because you'd be too impaired to drive or get any work done. Our treatments for glaucoma on the other hand, such as eye drops or surgery, are designed to decrease your eye pressure all day. So for these reasons, I don't recommend marijuana for glaucoma prevention or treatment. So in summary, some of the things you can do to prevent glaucoma are exercise frequently, Aim for 15 minutes of high intensity exercise five times a day. Drink hot tea daily. Eat lots of green leafy vegetables rich in nitrates like kale, arugula, and spinach, and to cut down on alcohol intake. I also want to mention a quick disclaimer on these prevention tips and any other conclusions based on epidemiological studies that you might hear on TV or in the media. It's often hard to make real-world clinical recommendations based on epidemiological data. Many of these studies are large observational cross-sectional studies, meaning that the researchers took a snapshot of research subjects' lifestyles and looked for associations. With these types of studies, it's really hard to firmly establish a causal relationship between a certain behavior and a disease. In order to do that, you need to run a prospective clinical trial. For example, you take a set of research subjects, have one group do a certain behavior like 
drink hot tea every day and another group where no one drank tea. Then you follow these patients over the course of years to determine a stronger link between this lifestyle change and glaucoma. These studies are understandably expensive, time consuming and difficult to do. So there are very few of them. Also add to the fact that many of these epidemiological studies were based on questionnaires. And I'm sure you can understand how hard it is for a research subject to accurately estimate how much, for example, green tea or alcohol they drank over a given time period. I don't even remember what I had for dinner two days ago. Also, another difficulty with these large scale epidemiological studies is the confounding effect. That is, when researchers are trying to identify the risk associated with a particular behavior, for example, drinking alcohol, you have to also accept that it's basically impossible to isolate just that one behavior in someone's life. It may be possible that people who drink alcohol also may be more likely to smoke or to exercise less or eat less vegetables or a whole list of other behaviors. Researchers try to account for these other variables and rule them out using fancy statistical analysis called multivariate analysis, but the truth is it's impossible to account for all of these other behaviors. Therefore, with any large-scale observational study, you have to keep in mind the limitations before drawing any conclusions. Usually, these observational studies are a great starting point of identifying certain behaviors and lifestyle changes that can affect the risk of disease. Then, scientists can design more controlled experiments to really examine if these effects are real or not. These observational studies still are very useful and in many ways some of the only evidence that is currently available. So we just try to do our best with the data we have to come up with conclusions that benefit patients and to guide further studies in the future. Okay, I think that's enough information for this video, but if you find this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more updates. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and want to get your eyes checked out for glaucoma, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.